We are now ready to start looking into the laws of thermodynamics. So the first law of thermodynamics can be simply stated as the law of conservation of energy. So energy is conserved. It can neither be created nor destroyed. So in order to express this mathematically, we're going to come up with a construct of the system, the surroundings, and the universe. So in mathematical terms, the energy change of the universe for any process is going to be zero, or the energy of the universe is constant, i.e. it is conserved. Okay, so the energy of the universe is constant, so let's draw the universe here. Okay, so this box, that is the universe. Yep, it all fits in there. Everything that has ever existed, exists, or ever will exist is inside this little box here called the physical or material universe. So inside this universe, we have two different locations. We have the system, which is the system of interest for whatever thermodynamic process that we're studying. Let me get that box to work out there. And then outside of the system, we have the surroundings. And the surroundings is just everything inside the universe, which is not the system. So it is everything else. So the system plus the surroundings equals the total universe. Okay, so if the energy change of the universe is zero, then if there's some process which changes the energy of either the system or the surroundings, then we know that the following has to be true. We know that the change in energy of the system plus the change in energy of the surroundings must equal zero because the sum of those two is the change of the energy in the universe. Okay, so that's the basics of the first law. So in order to talk about the system more, we need to talk about what types of systems we can, uh, we can uh, study. So we could have things that exchange between the system and the surroundings, things that could exchange between them. Uh, particularly, the system and surroundings can exchange, they could exchange matter and they could exchange energy. Now some of you are saying, but energy and matter are the same thing, E equals mc squared. Well, this is not relativity, this is not for that video. We're going to consider matter and energy to be different things for now. Matter just being things that have mass and energy being the capacity to do work. Okay, so the types of systems we can have then, if we have these uh, systems and surroundings here, can have three different types. You could have an isolated system and for an isolated system the system and surroundings don't exchange matter. That's a terrible one. Let's do that again. They don't exchange matter or energy. And we have a system, so that's uh, complete isolation, cannot exchange anything with the surroundings. The next uh, level up from there would be a closed system. For a closed system, the system and the surroundings can exchange energy, but not matter. So this is what we're going to start off looking at primarily our closed systems, systems that can exchange energy with the surroundings, but they are not going to exchange particles, they're not going to exchange matter. And then the final kind would be open, and an open system exchanges with the surroundings energy and matter. So everything is free to flow back and forth between the systems and the surroundings. And each of these different types of systems is going to have different thermodynamic quantities, which will be interesting to us when we see how they 
evolve in time, what processes are spontaneous, what processes can occur, uh, things like that. Okay, and then when we talk about energy being exchanged between the systems here, there's two different types of energy uh, that we're going to primarily discuss that can exchange between these systems. And the first would be work. So you could exchange work between the system and the surroundings. And that would be defined as energy input from surroundings to the system which result from an imbalance of forces between the two. So there is some difference in forces between the system and the surroundings that forces energy to either enter or leave the system. We're defining energy going from the surroundings to the systems as positive work. So that's just defined for a sign convention, which we'll see later. And then the other main form of energy we are interested in is heat. This being thermodynamics, study of the, fl the flow of heat or the motion of heat and the motion of energy. And so this would be the energy input from the surroundings to the system from a change in temperature of one or both of them. So if we have energy going from the surroundings into the system as a result of the temperature of either of those two changing, then that would generally be in the form of heat. That would be energy, which is results in thermal energy, which is at the microscopic level, the motions of particles moving faster and faster as their temperature goes up, as the heat goes up. So to make sure we got all these sign conventions right, let's, def let's make a little table here. So for the energy of the system, for work, and for heat, so we should remind ourselves that work is generally going to be indicated with a lowercase w. Heat is going to be indicated with a lowercase q. So for this, for the energy of the system here, for heat and work, if the energy of the system goes up, or if it goes down, if it goes up, we say that work is done on the system. If it goes down, we say that work is done on the surroundings. So whichever part of the universe is receiving the energy, its energy is going up, that is the part which on which the work is done. And then finally for heat, if the energy of the system goes up, we would say that heat is input into system. Heat is being input into the system. There's more energy, more thermal energy being put into the system. And if the energy of the system goes down due to a transfer of heat, we would say that heat is released from the system. So the energy of the system is going down because that energy is going to the surroundings as heat and is being released to the surroundings. So these are an intro to some of the concepts we're going to look at, uh, talking about the first law, mainly concerned with work and heat and how these are going to flow between the systems and the surroundings in a closed system.